Hi. How are you guys doing? I thought I'd talk about some easy to care for plants today because who doesn't need easy plants in their life? Let's start with this one up here. This is a lipstick plant. A lot of people mistaken this plant as the black pagoda, but this one in particular is not the black pagoda because this has green blooms. The actual black pagoda has orange blooms. I got it last year. It is in a six inch nursery pot. I have not repotted it. It is being grown in um, mainly, I think, peat moss. And the leaves are actually quite nice as far as lipstick plants because it has these, I guess, darker markings on the underside. That makes it quite cool. I love the pattern. That is actually why I got it in the first place. But it grows really easily and it is a relatively low light plant. I've cut it back many times to give cuttings away. Yeah, and it's a winter bloomer for the most part, although it is blooming a little bit right now, but mainly it blooms in the winter time. If you like to add a vining plant to your collection that has interesting um, foliage, I highly recommend it. Shall we go check out the next plant? All right, let's go. The next plant that I really love is the String of Heart. It is super easy. I actually have three different ones and I love them all pretty equally. I find that the heart-shaped leaves are really cute and it grows just nonstop. I have cut this, this one in particular back at least three or four times. I got it at a nursery as a four inch pot, so it's grown quite a bit and it's not balding too much on the top. Um, I know some people complain about that. So just watch your watering. If you want tips on that, I made a video um, and we'll link it above. And yeah, it's just a very easy grower, low maintenance, no pests, and it does prefer more light. So I do have it closer to a grow light. Uh, but if you have any kind of direct sunlight, I think it will do well as well, like for, I would say at least four hours. The more sun you give it, obviously give it more water, but it will be happier with more light versus low light. So this is a higher light plant, but it is a super easy plant and very rewarding. Um, you can share it with your friends pretty easily and you can propagate as many as you want. And yeah, I did that a lot initially, kind of overdid it. So I have many um, string of hearts throughout my house. This is a Peperomia scandin variegata propagation project that I put together using some fencing wire. These were all one node cuttings that I had taken from the mother plant. And the mother plant was actually a plant that I got from Taylor Greenhouses and you could check out that video, but it was not that big, but it grew and grew and grew. So I cut it down to kind of play with it because I realized how easy it grows. And unlike other peperomias, it can tolerate some drought because this thing gets really dry and I sometimes forget to water it. But as you can see, these are still the older leaves from the original uh, one node cuttings that I did. And they're still surviving. The leaves are quite succulent, so I feel like they're much more uh, drought resistant. And I don't know, I feel like it's pretty, the leaves are variegated. It really tolerates a varying degree of lighting. I wouldn't say it like needs a lot of lighting, but I do notice the foliage changing in color depending on how much light it gets. Sometimes it gets, um, it can get a little sickly looking with the combination of like being underwatered. But overall, I feel like it's doing really well. I wasn't really thinking that it would survive this experiment because of how I just been neglecting it, but it's doing pretty good and I'm hoping like it'll spread out and kind of go around the column. It also trails, even though it doesn't look like that right now, but usually if you were to find this, it would be in a trailing hanging basket. This is another Taylor Greenhouses plant that I got also as rooted cuttings. This is the Begonia Lestrada. Um, it is pretty cute. It has dark foliage with this kind of, I guess, greenish uh, vein that goes straight through the middle, which is quite, I guess, unique. 
uh, it is getting more light than I think it would really want. So the, the leaves are a bit, um, I guess, lighter. They're not as intense the color as it could be. Um, it's out of all the begonias I have, I've had zero problems with it and it's growing out of control as you can see. And it doesn't really drop leaves. It doesn't really complain about being too dry. Like, cause one of the things with a lot of begonias is they like to have consistent moisture uh, for the most part. And they like to have it dry out in between watering. So I really haven't been doing that. Like paying attention that closely to it. It does like, occasionally get these, you know, burnt leaves. Not entirely sure why, maybe because of everything I just told you, but <laughs> yeah, it seems to grow really well and I kind of like how crazy it sort of is. Like a little wild, wild child. So this is one of the many jungle cactus that I have in my collection. I really like this one. I got this as a rooted cutting from Taylor Greenhouses. Um, at the same time that I got some of the other plants that we mentioned earlier. This is called the Crispata. So it's a in the Rosalis family. And I really just love um, the unique like kind of scallop shape. And right here, it has like a little red glow to it because of the amount of sunlight it's getting in that spot. So it's been pretty happy, really low maintenance. And I'm growing it in kind of semi-hydro and it's really loving it. I don't really water it that much. I feel like it's pretty drought tolerant and I don't think it really needs direct sunlight. Like it's happy to get some, but I also feel like if you give this plant medium light, it would be happy with that. And I just really love the way it looks. It's quite unique and I'm looking forward to watching it become more full and yeah, super easy to propagate too. This is my variegated vanilla bean orchid. It is currently being grown in uh, Lekka. I also got this plant from Taylor Greenhouses and it was growing in moss. That's the way it came to me. And so I just kind of left it in there. Uh, and then I moved it into this jar with some Lekka and it's really um, been really happy. I can see a lot of new root growth and it's just been super easy. I really love how shiny the leaves are and I haven't had any issues with it. It doesn't really need high humidity. I think it looks great as just a single strand. I have seen it sold, you know, in a kind of more of a basket with more, you know, more than one cutting in it. But I think it looks beautiful, um, you know, just by itself. And yeah, I mean, look at it. This is another begonia that I got here locally. It, um, I actually didn't intend to keep these cuttings, but they have been growing like super easily. And so as you can see, it's already filled out the strawberry container that I propagated them in. Like I said earlier, I had no intentions of keeping this plant and it's just growing and blooming and it's just doing its own thing. I find it super low maintenance. I've had no issues with humidity at all. And I actually have it outside in the balcony right now. It does get a little bit of a uh, full sun, but not like an enormous amount, maybe two, two to three hours, I would say. And yeah, it's a creeping begonia. And I really like the color that it gives off it's with the pubescence. It's really cute. And I find the flowers to be quite sweet. So super easy, creeping begonia if something if it's something you're into. This is Peperomia incana. I really love this Peperomia um, because of its fuzzy leaves. This is why I got it from Taylor Greenhouses to begin with. And it's just been really easy. I find that Peperomias with thicker leaves are just a lot easier to care for. It's very drought tolerant. As far as lighting is concerned, I feel like medium light is good. I haven't really found it to be like super demanding as far as the light, but I also grow it under the LED. And yeah, super easy plant. I let it dry out completely in between watering and it seems to be really happy about that. I actually cut this plant to kind of try to promote branching from it. And 
think I talked about this in my other Peperomia video, so if you wanna check that out. When I cut it, it actually, this one did branch off, but not the other one, so I guess it's kind of up to chance. But I just wanted to, f to see if I can make it fuller, and it helped a little bit. So next up is my Hoya Surgenosis. It is definitely a champion as far as all of the Hoyas that I have. This thing has definitely taken some abuse from me just because having a lot of plants and didn't really want to deal with them when I, I guess uh, quarantine started. Anyway, I moved it around and it lost a bunch of leaves so it got really unhappy but now it's just bouncing back. So overall I feel like this plant just hasn't skipped a beat at all. And I also feel like because the leaves are so large, even if the leaves drop, you couldn't really tell if I didn't tell you that it dropped a bunch of leaves because I overwatered it. It is planted in cocoa bark, I wanna say. Yeah, I didn't actually, it, it came like this in the mail and I just left it in there. And I feel like, yeah, just water it, let it dry and then water it and we're good. It doesn't really need much. Although under higher light, it does get this nice red glow. So if you want that for your Hoya, I would recommend that. And it obviously would help, you know, produce some, uh, produce new growth. I haven't seen any peduncles yet, but like I said before, I really did abuse this plant quite a bit. Um, I am happy that it's still alive. Out of all the begonias that I have in my collection, this is my favorite. This is called the My Special Angel Begonia. And I really just love the silver dots. And these leaves can get really big, as you can see. King begonias are known to be really easy to care for because they're very drought tolerant. And it is proven to be true under my care as well. And it's grown a lot. I got this actually as a, I don't remember how many nodes it was, but it wasn't like a huge cutting. If you actually go to my Instagram, you can see um, what a baby plant this was when I first got it, and it's grown a lot since the spring. And I really just love the pattern. It has really cool, like the leaves are really cool looking, much more easy than a lot of my other begonias that I have. This is also a hybrid. You can probably get this at Steve's Leaves. But yeah, it is a beautiful plant and super easy. I have it in a self-watering pot now just to help keep it um, moist, but I don't really water it until it is dry in between watering. And as far as lighting is concerned, I would say medium to high indirect light um, yeah, to keep this beauty happy. I hope you enjoyed my easy and beautiful uh, houseplant collection. Yeah, let me know in the comments below which is your favorite and easiest houseplant. Until next time, happy growing.